Believe me, you will be so thankful to have watched this video end to end because it's going to save you so much time when it comes to prototyping. It's a very unknown feature, but it's so powerful. Thank you. Take a look at my screen over here. Now imagine you were designing a cryptocurrency app, right? You're allowing users to buy and sell cryptocurrencies. So on the left-hand side, you can see that we have three market screens. So imagine a user can tap into the market screen and you can see that they get access to all these different cryptocurrencies that they can buy and sell. On the right-hand side, we have a search screen. And then on the right-hand side of that, we have the actual individual coin page. So if you tap onto Ethereum, you can look at the graph and then you can buy and sell from here. You can then on the right hand side, you can see that we have a dedicated buying and selling screen, right? So from here, you can buy the actual coin. So let's imagine your product manager says to you, oh, and by the way, if you do want to advance in Figma, really get job ready, learn all the advanced techniques, processes, and also get access to all the templates, you can join over 4,900 students of mine in conquering Figma and become job ready and become a Figma master. So check out the link in the description below. All the details are there and I hope to see you on the other side very soon. Back to the video. Okay, in these screens, we actually want two entry points to the buy screen because we want to encourage that behavior because that's how the business actually makes money. The more people that buy on our platform, the more transaction fees, which means the more money we can make. From the designs, you can see that there is only one buy button, but last minute, the product manager tells you that we want to be able to, when the user swipes left on the Ethereum row over here, we want a quick action that allows them to take them directly to the buy screen as well. So you have two entry points. Okay, so traditionally what you would do is you'll go ahead and grab your Ethereum component over here, link them up in your prototype, you might change it to on drag, and then you might move in this screen over here. And then you would go from this buy button, click and drag, and then you'd also do on click, move in. So if you were ever to, let me just go ahead and preview this prototype for you. If you were ever to just quickly slide that in, you will slide in the buy screen. Or if you were on this page, and you were to hit on buy, it would slide in that screen as well. Pretty simple, right? But here's the problem. What happens if you want to go back? Where does this component take you? So traditionally, you'll be fairly stuck because you can only create one link to one screen. So if I want to use the back button to go back to here, in the user flow, in the prototype, what if the user came in from the sliding? So if we go back over here and hit back, it takes us back to this screen, but what if we want it to be dynamic? So it allows or knows which screen it actually came from. So this is the bomb, okay? So it's going to be very, very simple. I'm just gonna go ahead and just remove these uh, prototyping links. Here's the trick. Figma actually launched a new feature called sections a while ago. It's actually not a new feature anymore, but a lot of people thought that sections was simply used to create sections on your canvas, just to keep things more organized. So for example, if I had the market screens over here or the market flows, I can go ahead, wrap that inside and call it markets, for example. And then I could use the sections over here and call this the buy and sell flow, right? So obviously there'll be more and more screens. However, a lot of people didn't realize that this was actually a way to help you create more seamless and more advanced prototypes. So what this is actually doing is it's telling Figma that all these screens in this section are grouped together, all the screens over here are grouped together in a different flow. So this time around, what we can do is we can do the same thing. We can go ahead and do a prototype link over to this screen and we can do it on drag, right? Move in, cool. On the buy button, we can do the same thing as well, right? Just like that. And we can go over to on click, we can move this in. But from the back up icon, we can actually go ahead now, click and drag and not connect it to any specific screens. Instead, we connect it to this entire section. So what this will do is Figma can then it will know not to link the back button to an individual screen. It won't be specific. It will dynamically go back to whichever screen it came from within the market section, okay? So if I go ahead and now preview this prototype, let me just quickly link the search bar up as well, just so we have a end-to-end -end flow. So now if I go ahead and prototype this, so starting flow, 
let's go ahead and I can go drag, takes me to the buy screen, go back. It would take me back to the actual um, market screen. I can also go into the search. I can go into the Ethereum coin page. I can hit buy. And if I hope go back, it knows to go back to that same screen it came from. So you can utilize sections to keep your page or keep your Figma canvas organized, but it's also a very powerful tool to create more dynamic prototypes within Figma. Now with that said, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to gently smash that like button, subscribe for the diehard fans. And if you wanna learn more, make sure to check out this video and I'll see you in another video very soon.